a lady hearing my voice. One prophet slept with you. And he took your glory away. And as a result of that, to move forward had been so difficult in your life. You are hearing my voice now. If you are in the hall, put your hand on your head. If you are listening online, put your hand on your equipment. The power of the devil over your life is broken. In the name of Jesus. That limiting power over your life is broken today. In the name of Jesus. Come alive afresh. I command a new life. A new life. A new life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord for answer prayer. We give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus name I pray. Now let me go further. Number six. You know I'm just telling you how to take your decisions. I said count one to ten. And win. When you are taking decisions. On any subject. Look at this. 10 points and it will help you in your decision making you know decision taking doesn't look spiritual why it is so 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 spiritual it is so so spiritual it's so serious so critical because the moment you take wrong decisions you are in trouble doesn't matter how much of speaking in tongues you can do. You need to know how to take your decisions. Point number six. What does it cost? This decision you are about to take, what is it going to cost you? And are you willing to pay the price? The decision you are about to take, what is it going to cost you? You want to go to live in uh, Canada. Hmm. Wonderful. I know most people in Nigeria, at least about 50%, if I'm not right, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm right, want to travel abroad, want to go and live in Canada, live in Europe, live in America. Okay. Well, does it, do, you know, do you know what it's going to cost you? That decision. If you move to Canada, what will it cost you? You must think about it. And are you willing to pay the price? One of us went and uh, landed in Canada. And I spoke with him within the week. So, how are you? He said, ah, daddy. Hmm. <laughs> Are you fine? He said, ah, hmm, hmm, daddy. Hmm. <laughs> I said, ah, what is all this daddy, daddy? He said, everywhere is white. <laughs> he said, everywhere is white. The whole floor is white. He said, it's like, it's like you are walking inside, this, inside the freezer. I said, welcome to Canada. Those are things it will cost you. Your, fr your friends in America, in Canada, in all those other countries, they don't, maybe they are not telling you what they are going through. It is hell sometimes. I went to Connecticut some times ago. It was, I think that was, was it November or December? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Come and see. I had to, you know the way Baba Sue used to dress? I think the man has died now. Uh -huh. May so he rest in uh, peace. The way he used to dress, all those dresses, and then you wear. Uh, when they, they gave me a <laughs> something, I don't know whether I should call that one a cap now, that has to cover my hair. Ha! Ah, actually, it was like my, my hair was going to cut off. In fact, Many times I felt the hair was no longer there. <laughs> ha! Hey! Pity them. They are going through hello. 
I visited a couple we were, we were in uh, uh, what's that place called? Alberta region in Canada. In the morning, the battery of the vehicle will not even start. Ha! Sometimes you see the snow, all this one that you just go inside your vehicle and start vehicle and start going. You have to shovel the, uh, what do you call it? The snow. Huh? Ha! Ah, you spray it. You scrape, you shovel it. You have to, it's not scrape, scrape is a simple thing. You shovel. <laughs> ha! Before you can move at all out of your house. Hey. Hey, oh yeah. You don't understand. They understand. They are hearing me now. They understand what I'm talking about. So when you are taking a decision, you need to know what it will cost you. My boy said, Daddy, ah, ah. I said, welcome to Canada. You have been, he had been dreaming of going to Canada for over five years. He wants to go. He wants to go. He wants to go. Every time he came to my office, Daddy prayed for me. Daddy prayed. Now he got there, he's complaining. You, you, you don't complain. You get used to it. It will cost you something. Every decision you take will cost you something. Before you take that decision, think about the costs. What are the cost implications? And are, we, are you willing to pay the price? Because there is nothing that is free. There is a cost for any decision you will take. So one major question you must ask yourself is what it will cost you. And verify if you will be ready to pay the price. For instance... Having a degree will cost you several years of staying in class. That's, it's, it, that's something. You have to go through it. You want to have a degree, then you must be ready to give your years for it. When I, when I got my first degree, I calculated how many years I have spent in school. And I realized it was no joke. Oh, I think it was 20-something years when I did my calculation. I can't remember again. Maybe 25 or 20-something. 20 20, maybe 22 or something years and then I had the first degree I said I am now a graduate after 22 years of moving from one school to another one school to another one school to another eh? and seeing all kinds of teachers all kinds of lecturers all kinds of I saw a lecturer that would come to class with uh, what do you call Ikoko eh? Ikoko Pipe. He will come to class with a pipe in his mouth. And when he, when he gets to class, he'll just stand in front of us and light his, his uh, pipe. And we are all watching as he's uh, poofing the thing up and poofing it up. And when we say, oh God, we are, he says he's catching his breath. He's catching his breath. And then he will speak for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, he will go and pick his uh, Ikoko again and light it. While we are watching, he's catching his uh, breath. Another one, it was cigarettes. All kinds of lecturers. I saw all kinds. I saw all kinds. But after seeing all of that, failing several times and passing several other times, I got a certificate and I said, I'm now a graduate. Is that not what happened to you? That's what happened to most of us. You went through something to get something. So what I'm saying is that when you are trying to take a decision, you need to know that there's a dimension of sacrifice that must go with it. You want to build a personal house of your own, it may cost you cutting down on the kind of food you eat. It may cost you cutting down some dimension of comfort that you have now so that you can build a house of your own. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. All. You want to have a baby. It will cost you nine months pregnancy. 
as a woman. And pregnancy can be very challenging, you know. When your stomach, your stomach is just growing out. So you can have an idea what happens to a pregnant woman. And the thing just keeps growing. And then you're seeing, you can't see your, your leg any longer. The thing is just, unless you bend. And you're carrying it everywhere. Everywhere you are going, the thing is going ahead of you. <laughs> You think that joke? No be joke. No be joke. Now serious matter. Sacrifice. It's, it's, it will cost you something. Your shape will change. Your breasts will change. Your nose will change. Everything will change about you. Some people get ugly when they are pregnant. It will cost you something. Some will spit and spit and spit like they are spitting up their throat. Sacrifice. All kinds of challenges that will come along with it. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's not free. There's nothing you want that is free. It will cost you something. So think about it before you decide. You want to walk with God? As a man of God or something like what we do, it will cost you a lot of comfort. Ah, for instance, I won't tell you how I fast. I won't tell you how I spend most of my time, day and night, to keep pace with God. Because he's moving and you have to move with him. The cloud of glory is moving. Let us move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. As the Lord is moving, you have to be pursuing him. What is he doing now? He told me something he was going to do in my life. He gave me five year notice. And he left. I sat down and began to think. Why did he come to tell me? It's not yet time. And then the Holy Spirit said, so that you can get ready. I said, hey, how do I get ready? Number one, my breakfast. I don't want breakfast again. I want to get ready. I want to get ready. It will cost you a lot. I don't want to say more so that it won't look like I'm boasting. Ah, what about the wife? What will it cost her that her husband is working with God? Plenty. Because he won't have time for you again. All the pleasures you are supposed to have together, he won't be able to do it. So, it's a lot of sacrifice. But when God told me five years time, something is going to I called my wife, I said, do you know that something is happening? And I toasted her, toasted her, and introduced it to her. Because I know she's going to be the one that will suffer a lot. For me to be ready for what God is doing in my life. And of course, when the reward also comes, she will receive the largest reward. And if she begins to receive the reward and you are angry, God will slap you. Hello? Because when a, a, a wife of a man of God begins to enjoy some things, you know, People begin to ask questions. They say, ah, someone in corner one Benny. Ah, 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 ah. Look at the car she's driving. And God will give you a knock on the head. Beware. Well. Don't join them to criticize men of God. Though. Because you don't know who is genuine from those who are fake. It's all right. It's good to criticize the fake, but don't criticize the genuine. If you criticize a genuine man of God and his God is angry with you, you won't know who is fighting with you. You won't know because you can't detect. You can't. You won't know where we come from. You just, ah, you just be wondering, and you'll be going to the one fighting with you to pray. 
He said, oh Lord, oh Lord, my God. The more you cry, the more he knocks you on the head. Be well. You can't eat your cake and have it. Check what it would cost. Number seven. Does he honor God when you are take, trying to take a decision? Question number seven you should ask yourself is does it honor God? Another way to say that is what is God's opinion about this subject? If people meet me doing what I mean doing that subject, doing that thing, what would they recognize? What would they think about me? Would they still recognize me as a child of God? That's another way to say, does he honor God? There are some things when you do it, your status change immediately. People look, people look at you, people looking at you immediately conclude that you are not a child of God because of what you have done. Whatever you do that sends people away from the faith doesn't honor God. For instance, I had to handle a case where a pastor was left in custody of some computers. A member of his congregation, <coughs> excuse me, a member of the congregation was traveling abroad. He had, she had some assignment to do for two years abroad. And she had a computer center. And a number of computers, maybe about 10 of them. And she felt, I will be coming back in two years' time. I will still need my computers. So he met, she met the pastor, her pastor. Please, can I keep this computer in your house, in your church, in your compound, somewhere? So that two years' time, I'll come and pick them up. And pastor said, ah, ah, why not? You are going abroad. It's all right. So they brought all the ten computers into pastor's house. And they kept them. He gave them a good place to keep it. Two months after the woman left, pastor sold all the computers. And he ate the money. He said, who goes to London and come back after two years? She will not come back. She will stay there. He spent he spend the money and continued life as though nothing happened. Exactly two years, like the woman said, she arrived. And she set up her office. She didn't even consider, Pastor greeted her. Even, she didn't consider that an issue. She just went and rented a, uh, an office. She was ready to start her business. And then she came, Pastor, I'm a computer in Imuaco. <laughs> and there were no computers. Pastor had eaten all of it. And she now arrested Pastor. And it became a major subject. Yeah, people waiting and convinced her to release her pastor. You don't. You don't lock up your pastor. <laughs> Is it computer? God will give you more. Forget about it and all of that. And she released pastor eventually. And forgot about the computer. But if you are the woman, will you still go to that church? Or if you know that story, will you go to that church? So that pastor, the church closed up. In fact, he had to relocate to another state where they didn't know the story of his computer to go and start. What you are about to do, does he honor God? When people hear about it, what, what impression do they have about you?
If I were that pastor, I wouldn't even allow you to keep computer with me. Because that's not my job. I don't keep computers. Or you are bringing money. You are needing a place to keep money. I don't have money. I don't, I don't have place to keep money. I'm not a bank. You can't come and say you want to keep money with me. Ask who? Am I a bank? There's a bank who collects money. The other day I was here praying. And some three boys came. They prostrated, sir. Uh, and they introduced themselves. They said they have a problem. This one, his father was a brigadier in the army. At so so and so time, they went to do the fight in Syria alone or something. And the man made some money in Syria alone. But he couldn't bring the money into Nigeria because of the kind of job that he was doing as a military officer. So he kept the money in Syria alone. Now, the man has died. And he is the sole, sole what do you call him now? Ness of king. is the one who wants to bring the money into Nigeria. And the money is large. They call the figure. Some figure that you don't want to be hearing because it will make you angry. <laughs> they call a huge figure. They said they want to bring it into Nigeria. And they know that if this boy should bring that kind of money into Nigeria, uh, FCC, EFCC will be after him. They said, but they know that I'm a man of God, respected. And I go and come out and into Nigeria. So they know that if such a money pass through my account, there will be no problem. So they want to pass it through my account. And they are going to give me, they told me the percentage, I can't remember. <laughs> Very nice scintillating percentage of a huge impossible money. And they said, we, we, we were thinking that the man of God we should meet is somebody who is committed to evangelism. Because we want to be sure that the money goes to the work of God. And so we have chosen you, sir. So we have just come so that we can agree. We will bring documents we sign. And then the money will pass through your accounts. Ah. I didn't need to pray. Instantly, I just told them, I am a servant of God. I am not a money, money handler. I don't handle money. Even the offering in church, I don't handle it. Some other people count it. I asked them, have you come to our church before? One of them said he has come before. Uh -huh. Did you see me count offering? When we give offering, I'm the first person to give. And uh, after the service, I carry my iPad or Bible and I enter my office. Some people count the money and take it away. I don't touch money. So that I can focus on my job of praying and preaching. I'm not telling a lie. Is that not the truth? That's the truth. They say so that we will have money. I say I don't need money. The one who gave me the assignment I'm doing provides the money I need. I'm sorry, oh. You can't pass it through my account. Later, I learned that they were fraudsters. That's the way they choose people around. They go around and they collect your account details. And then they begin to attack you. But the mere fact that I already have solution. I know who sent me on error. He has already solved the problem before he started. So what I'm trying to say is this. Whatever we know honor God. Don't do it. Now, if I give them account and they now, assuming that they are genuine, and they now bring that kind of money, and EFCC now comes to arrest me, money I don't know where it's coming from. What will you say about me, by the way? Ah, beware now. Don't. Surely, think about it, fair my jegbi. I'm a cookie. Somebody was duped. And I heard about it. I asked him, how did it happen? 
He said they came and told him that that there was this business about uh, gold. You know, precious stones and something and something and something. I said, are you? <laughs> do you say gold? He said, it is a, it's, it's, it's a very fine business. Okay. And to bat him, what far? Umarufu, no. There are some routes you should not even pass. He make it you to lie down in green pastures. He take it you through paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Paths of righteousness. Anything that is not righteous. That will not give glory to God. Don't do it. Don't get yourself involved in silly, silly things. Does he honor God? This thing that they are talking about. Does he give glory to God? I remember when I was going to, let me leave that subject and go to another direction. In example. In 1985, when I was going to choose who to marry. There were plenty issues involved. The first and foremost issue was, it has to be a believer. The person I'm going to marry must be a child of God. Why? Because the Bible says we should not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Not because unbelievers are bad, but because I cannot live with her. I cannot live with an unbeliever. I wake up in the morning and say, Uluwa Edara. You say, what's wrong? Is there a problem? No. I must live with somebody who understands my language. If you, if you suddenly wake me up and I'm at the first thing I begin to speak is tongues. And you are an unbeliever. What will you do? You will run. But the one I marry, if I'm speaking in tongues, she too would go in that gear because she too can operate at that level. If she's not operating, she has not chosen to operate at that time. She's not threatened. She's not troubled. When an attack comes to me. She knows what to do. She knows who to call. So the first subject is is she a believer? The person I want to marry. Does, what does God think about it? He must be a believer. The second subject I consider. He must be a lady, not a man. I just noted that because I hate to live I <laughs> It must be a lady <laughs> who believes God the same way as I do. Because the fact that somebody is a believer does not mean that he will believe God your way. So that you and your wife will not be fighting about whether you should tie scarf or not tie scarf. Use your ring or not use your ring. This is the kind of clothes. It, it will be a battle zone if that is the situation in your home. If you are going to marry, you should marry somebody whose ideas are like your ideas. That's what we call compatibility. Compatibility. All of that came to bear when I was trying to choose a wife. I knew she must be a member of the kind of fellowship I attend. She must believe God the same way I believe God. So I began to narrow down. I had not even started asking God, who should I marry? I was deciding by myself. I narrowed it down. And I began to look around me at people who are around me. I have not even asked God any question. I'm talking to myself. Who should I marry? And I began to pinpoint. And I got a number of ladies. A number of them, maybe about five, that I began to zero upon. Don't deceive yourself. There is the dimension of your factor. You have to do that one by yourself. And when I was trying to do that, I wasn't looking for vigor eight. I wasn't looking for a beautiful lady. Because beauty, the Bible had spoken about beauty before. And I discovered, my mom, my mom, I didn't, my, the reason why I respect my mom is not because she's beautiful. 
It, it, it didn't matter whether she was beautiful or ugly. What mattered was that she was my mother. And a wonderful mother. A loving mother. So I wasn't looking for a beautiful girl to marry. I was looking for a, a lady that would be a mother to my children. A lady that would be a good friend to me. A lady that would love me all life. That I can love all life. So I zero to about five of them. These five people are committed to the things of the kingdom. They can die in it. Not the yo-yo type. Yo-yo type are good, though. Yo-yo man, marry yo-yo girl. <laughs> Your home will be in good order. There will be no problem. Both of you are yo-yo. <laughs> but if somebody like me marry yo-yo, one of us will kill the other. <laughs> because... Too much of fasting will kill a yo-yo. <laughs> so you need to know who is good for you. There's no fight about it. Your person determines the kind of person you will attract. I'm not joking. I'm serious. Oh. If you are the lackadaisical like Christian, don't look for a Jim Jim brother. <laughs> you will have problem, oh. Look for somebody at your level. And among those people I streamlined, I now began to pray. Who is it, Lord? Is it one of these people I've chosen? And God said, yes, he's one of them. <laughs> so who is it out of them? As I kept on praying, the list kept on reducing. Because the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Stop about her. Leave her alone. She's not part of your life. Okay. There's no argument about it. Because I'm only trying to know. Not that I'm arguing. Not that I'm, I'm deciding. I'm fighting. What am I fighting with God about? He knows tomorrow. I don't know tomorrow. After some time, it remained two. Two of them. And it became more difficult. The two of them were so close to me. Each time I was going to preach somewhere, they go with me. This one we go, that one we go. We carry, carry Bible. All of us, we will die in the village. We will do all kinds of... They follow me everywhere. So I was struggling. Which one? Which one, Lord? Which one, Lord? And you know my heart now as a person. I began to like one more than the other. I said, it should be this one. My mind was going that direction. And the Holy Spirit came and said, God does not look like man looks. It's not the way man looks that God looks. And since I don't like what he's saying, I push it aside. Because he was telling me not to look the way I'm looking. But I didn't listen. I kept on looking. And then he showed me a vision. And he showed me that this is my wife. Okay, Lord. No arguments. But I want to be sure you are the one speaking. I kept on praying. Another, first, another week, he told me again. In another way. I said, okay, two or three witnesses. That's what the Bible says. I want more. Give me more witnesses. I want you to confirm it. Make it clear. A friend of mine came from Ibadan. I was, I was in OAU. We were in OAU. He came. He said, ah, Brother Gwinga, you know what God is saying to me about you? God is telling me that it's time for you to choose a wife. And I laugh at him. I said, ah, ah, you want to be the pastor to join us together? Wife will come. Concubine. And we laughed and we began to talk. He began to talk. He said, God told him that there are two ladies that I'm involved with. And I'm trying to decide between the two of them. He said, the one that I'm looking at most is not the one. He doesn't know the two ladies, so, but he knows that it's not the one I'm looking at most. It's the other one. 
And that was exactly what God had been telling me. So, I accepted God's plan. And I got my wife in 1985. 85? This is 2022. How many years? 37 years. In 37 years, there hasn't been one single day that I said, why did I take this decision like this? Oh. That I felt sorry, unhappy, that I took a wrong... Ah, 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 ah. Uh, it's excitement all through. Because I got it right. But the focus was, what is God's opinion? I want to please him. I want to have it the way God wants it. So number seven, what is God's opinion on that subject? Number eight, the number eight question you should ask yourself is, where is the best venue for it? Where is the best venue for it? Now, this question may not be relevant to every subject, but a number of subjects, you need to ask that question. The subject of venue. Because there's a venue for everything in life. God told Abraham to relocate to Canaan. He asked Isaac to remain there in Canaan at the time of famine. And he obeyed and prospered. His own son, Jacob, was struggling in a different land, Aaron. And God went and met him and told him, go to Canaan. That's your land. Because there's a venue for every vision or assignment. There's a venue for each person in life. There's a place where you should live. The kind of assignment you have chosen may determine where you would operate. Because there's a specific place that can make your operation efficient. And there are some venues that can make life complicated for you. But it's not good for you thank you it's not good for you to take your decisions on physical parameters alone you should allow God's input in your decision number nine what is the hurry about you must be careful about anything that places you on the spot Anything that is making you to take a decision now, 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 now. In most cases, it is the devil that is putting you under pressure. He's the one that wants to make you take an immediate decision that you will regret tomorrow. You know, oftentimes, people who are selling, who want to sell things to you, they will give you an impression that you must purchase immediately. Because someone else is equally eager to buy it. But in most cases, it's just a market gimmick. Some of us who have allowed them to put us under pressure like that, you take decisions and you regret it later. Relax. I remember some years ago, I was living in Ife at that time. And I was driving out of town, going on a journey to Oyo. And I got to a filling station, and I saw about four, by, four or five vehicles waiting to buy fuel. It was around 6.30 in the morning, early in the morning. As I saw them, I said, ah, they are selling fuel in this place. I looked at the tank of my vehicle, it was half tank. That should take me to a year, but it will not bring me back. So I said, shouldn't I buy fuel here? And then I was in a hurry. I said, ah, I don't want to delay. Let me go, let me go, let me go. I'll buy fuel. There are other cities on the way. I'll buy fuel. And I moved. When I moved a little distance, the Holy Spirit said, go back and buy fuel in that place. I said, ah, I'm in a hurry, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. You know, Lord, that 
if I don't get to you on time, this man may not be there. I was, I was a contractor at that time, going after a contract. I went. A little more distance. The Holy Spirit said, I told you to buy fuel in that place. I said, I left the place since. Will I go back? He said, it's easier to go back now. I said, no, Lord. Let me keep going. When I get to Ede, I will buy fuel. If I don't buy in Ede, I will buy in Iwo. There are towns on the way. Let's go, Jari Oluwa. I want to get to a job before, before that man leaves the office because I have learned that he will travel. Okay. Keep going. I went. When I got to Ede, there, there was no fuel anywhere. I said, okay, I will get in the wood. When I got to a wood, there was no fuel anywhere. Ah. Kilo Shele, don't you know that there is fuel crisis? I didn't know. Where can I get fuel? They said there is no place in the whole of Iwo where they are selling fuel at that time. Ah. Okay now. So I stopped accelerating. I started using Neutra. I said managing my fuel. started... I will run and then jack it into neutral and keep going, you know, that kind of thing. When I was, as I was approaching or you're like this, my fuel finished. So I parked the vehicle and went by Okada. There was no station in the whole of Oyo town selling fuel. Ah! Trouble. Now, number one, the man I was pursuing was not even in the office. He didn't even come because of a crisis. Meanwhile, I was already in crisis myself. Thank God, I saw some black markets and I was able to buy two gallons of black markets with the money that would have fueled my entire tank. I bought it, two gallons, poured it into my vehicle. And it just started. And with that one, I drove back so he woke. You need to know how I can pray. I began to pray. Ya Oh Lord my God. There must be fuel in the woe. There must ah cash bear moti bad. Maybe it wouldn't have been like that. And then I eventually got to a woe and met fuel in one station. There was one station that was selling. Come and see the queue. It was another thing, but I had no option. I just joined the queue. And we were fighting, 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 fighting until eventually they sold to me. What did they say? 15 liters. They were rationing it. 15, 15 for every vehicle. 15 liter. That 15 liter, I used it to drive from Iwo to Ilefe. And the thing carried me to Ilefe quite well. He finished at the filling station where God said buy fuel in the morning. That's where the fuel finished. Now, when I got there, there was a queue of over 30 vehicles waiting for fuel. I just joined the queue. I thought they were selling. When I got, in, got to the place, they said they are not selling. They are waiting for fuel to arrive. My vehicle was in that station for four days. Is it three days or four days? Can you remember? I think three days or four days. My vehicle was there. Waiting for fuel to arrive because there was no other place in the whole zone that had fuel. And then on the fifth day or so, we now got fuel. We started selling. I stayed there the whole day before I got fuel that day. I could easily have just bought it when God said, buy fuel here. I was in a hurry. Whatever is putting you under pressure, eh? and he's telling you, go, eh, eh, eh. Most of the time, it's from the devil. Don't, don't make too much of haste and jump out of purpose. Number 10. Who can we trust? Who can be trusted? Or maybe you say, who is best fitted for this decision that you are taking? Who can you relate with on this subject? Many decisions you will need to make has to do with who to depend upon? 
Someone told me how she needed to keep some money in an account. And her own account was not good enough. And she kept the huge money in another man's account. The problem was that the man spent the money and landed her in trouble. Another person brought someone into my office to ask me to be a guarantor. She was about to take a loan from a bank. She wants to take a loan from a bank. And she did not need the money. But this other fellow, this other brother needed the money. So she would borrow money from the bank and give to this brother. And she want me to be the guarantor. Me. Guarantor that he would pay back her money. Both of them were members of my church. I looked at her like this. I looked at her. And I told her, you are such a fool. Such a fool. You will take loan from a bank and give it to this fellow to go and spend. Mr. Fellow, I cannot guarantee you. I can't guarantee anybody on that kind of thing. What's my business? A loan from a bank. Some people have mind, you know. You can borrow money from a bank. In fact, in the first place, I don't know why you want to borrow money from a bank. The bank, the, 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 let me not say things. They are so cruel, so callous. They survive by cheating you. They cheat all of us, don't they? Don't you see all the money they draw from your account? Don't mind my interpreter, he works in a bank. You may not want to say what I'm saying. <laughs> they keep on deducting your money deduct this, deduct that and you go and take loan from them anyhow interest, interest when you go to bank they, there are plenty of things you need to, to, to sign and they don't allow you to read them they just tell you it doesn't matter just sign here <laughs> just sign here and many of us because we are in a hurry you just sign jade, jade And then somebody will now go and take the loan and give it to somebody else to spend. And then I will be guarantor. <laughs> go and do it, but remove me from the matter. That's your own headache. Who can you trust? When you want to take decisions, major decisions like that, even Jesus, the Bible said he did not commit himself to men. He didn't, because he didn't allow men to decide his things for him. And he told us, Be, I'm sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be, be gentle as doves, but wise as serpents. Be gentle. Huh? Don't fight with anybody. But watch yourself. Don't get, don't let them destroy you. A while ago, I was, somebody was a member of our church, was an able boy. His life was so, so, so miserable. No help for him. And I wanted to help. I pray, 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 pray. At a point, I felt this matter goes beyond prayer. And there was a lady I knew who was the director of a, an a, iron, iron melting company. And I met with her. Can you do business with my church member. Give him iron rods and let him pay. I should say, why not? Anything for you, pastor. I said, but you need to see my chairman. The chairman is her father. She was the managing director. And the man came, elderly man, about my father's age mate. I went to see him. He gave me good wine. Not alcoholic. He knew I'm pastor. I don't know whether he drinks alcoholic, but the one he gave me was not alcoholic. And he took care of me. I had a great time. He said, man of God, I learned you want to do business with us. I said, yes, sir. Actually, it's my church member. He said, your church member or your son? Yes, it's my son, actually, but it's my church member. 
Okay, what's his name? I mentioned the name. He said, it's even Ibo. Are you Ibo? I said, I'm Yoruba. He said, ah, man of God, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. And he kept on looking at me. He kept on looking at me as I was talking. <laughs> After all the talking and talking, he said, sir, hold on. He said, in terms of age, I think you will be about the age of my son. I said, yes, actually, sir, you should be about the age of my father. So you are a father. He said, you know, the first, you know, each time my trailer land in this, your boy's shop, you'll be bringing items worth about 120 million. Just one trailer will bring about 120 million to him. And you want me to give it to him and he will pay after. He said, because of the relationship you have with my daughter. Of course, I can do that. But if your boy does not pay my money as at when due, I won't go after him, I will come after you. And I would not call you man of God at that time. He said, I give you one week to think about it. If your answer is still yes, talk to my daughter. She already has my word on it. But when the matter comes up, oh, I thank him profusely. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I didn't go back. I didn't go back. <laughs> I didn't go back because this guy himself, I don't even know his house. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know his people. I don't know anywhere I came from. I don't know his town. I don't know his village. Even the one I know his house, I know his wife. I, would I would I swallow him if he doesn't pay the money back? <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. So don't put yourself in the hands of people. I don't know why you go and put your money in somebody's account. Open your own account and put your money in your own account. Any transaction you cannot do, don't do it. Some people cannot be trusted. So it pays you not to commit yourself into their hands. Behave like the serpent. Hide yourself from their hurtful hands. So that they will not hurt you and destroy things that, be, that are precious to you. Even Jesus said, cast not your peers before the swine. So you let God lead you about men. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I think I should stop there because of my time. Or because of our time. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Rise up. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I honor you. I will lift up my hands unto your name. Can you pray for access? Ask him to give you more access. I want to have a better relationship with you, Lord. Give me better access. Better access. Can you pray? Can you pray? I want to see life through your eyes, Lord. Give me more access to you. Teach me to take the right decisions all the time. I want to take the right decisions all the time. I will lift up my hands unto your name. I lift my hands up unto your name. I lift my hands up unto your name. My lips shall praise you. 
Thus will I honor you. I will lift up my hands unto your name.